Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating an effect in Illustrator where the intersection between lines is much thicker and rounder, almost as if it was hand drawn. Now we're going to start by creating our shape. So I'm going here to the ellipse tool. It doesn't matter how big your document is. I'm just going to create a circle. I'm going to give it a 30 point stroke which is going to be a fairly sort of hefty stroke weight and I am going to remove the fill because I want to be able to see a line that is placed over this. So let's go and get our line and let's go and create another couple of shapes just so we have something to work with. Now for each of these shapes that has an end on it, such as this line here, I want to round its end. So on the stroke panel, I'm going to select here rounded caps just so they have rounded ends. Now the process that we're going to go through here to get these sort of rounded joints is going to thin down our lines. So you don't want to start with a line thickness that you want to end up with. You want to start with a line thickness quite considerably bigger than what you want to end up with. Just a word of warning there. We're going to select all of our shapes, go to Effect and then Blur and then Gaussian Blur. And we're going to apply a fairly hefty sort of radius here. What we're looking at is softening these joins. And so you can crank this up to whatever you like. I'm just choosing something between 6 and 7 right now, 6 and 7 pixels for the design that I have. I'll click OK. Now we're going to take these shapes and we're going to rasterize them. So we're going to fix this in position. So at this point, there is no ability to change things from this point on. We're going to object and then rasterize. I'm going to choose resolution at 300 ppi, which is a high resolution. Background is white. I'm just going to click OK. So now we have an image. So if we go to the layers panel here, we'll see that this layer here is actually an image layer. So we can now trace it. And with it selected, you'll see that the trace options are up here on the control bar. So I'm just going to click here on image trace. I'm warned it's a pretty large image. It's not really. So I'm just going to select it to continue. Now I'm going to the image trace panel. If you don't see an option for this up here, it's under window and then image trace. So with the image trace panel, we're just tracing in black and white because that's the image that we've got here. The threshold value is going to be of help to us because it determines how many of those sort of fuzzy pixels are going to be deemed to be white and how many are going to be deemed to be black. So let's just crank it up all the way. You'll see that everything becomes black. So the higher value we get, the more black we have in the image. But the lower value we have, we get more of these rounded edges. You can see that less of the line is being picked up and perhaps more focus is being given to these nice rounded edges. And this is where the warning comes in. Remember Bryce said that you're going to end up with something thinner potentially than what you started with. We've got something here that's quite considerably thinner in terms of the lines than what we started off with. Now you'll also get some value from the files option here. So increasing or decreasing the paths option may give you a different result. You will want to wait for Illustrator to catch up. It's not showing so much on this image, probably with the values that I'm using, but I have seen it affect the trace significantly in other circumstances. So once we've got what we want on the screen, we're just going to click Expand. Now in the Layers palette, we want to be sure about what we've got here. And you'll see that we've got some white filled shapes. So when I click on this, you'll see that this is a white filled shape. That's this shape in here. If you're going to do the next step and try and thicken these lines a little bit, you're going to need to get rid of everything that is white filled. So I'm selecting all of these. They're all the white filled shapes and I'm just going to remove them. And I'm also going to remove this compound path at the back, which is the outline again in white. Now, let me just undo that for a second. If you've got a lot of white filled shapes, what you can do is just go and select one of them and then go to select and same and fill color. And that will select all the white filled objects and you can just press delete to get rid of them all in one keystroke. And you'll want to do that if you've got a lot of them. So now we've got this shape here at the bottom 
and it's a compound path. If it was a number of different shapes, you would probably want to create a compound path from them. So you would select over all of them and choose Object, Compound Path, and then Make. But we already have a compound path. I'm going to drag it out of the group. There's no point in it being in the group. And now we can thicken it up. And we can thicken it up by selecting it and choosing Object, and then Path, and Offset Path. But you will need to have gotten rid of the white things before you do this. Now my offset set at 5 pixels. The default is 10 pixels, but I just want a little bit of an offset. So you can see that I'm thickening my lines up a little bit now, but I've still got these really nice bendy corners. I'll click OK. Now this gives us two shapes here. There's the original line here, and then there's this offset path. So if I don't want the original shape, I can just delete it because it's not helping here. This is my new path with these nice rounded joins. Now it's also possible to do this with drawing. So here I've got a piece of line work. So I've got my artwork here. I am going to increase the stroke weight because I think I want to have thicker lines, but I'm going to do exactly the same thing with effect blur and apply a Gaussian blur. Now the Gaussian blur here is probably too much, so I'm going to decrease it a little bit for this particular project. Click OK. Then we're going to rasterize it with Object Rasterize. We're going to select the same settings as we used previously. And now because this is a image, we're going to Image Trace. And we can adjust our settings here until we get what we want. And then we're going to click Expand go into this group. We're going to find everything that is white filled. So let's just select one of these objects. We'll go to Select and then Same, Fill Color, and I'll just press Delete to get rid of them. So I'm left with these compound shapes and I can group them all together by selecting them all and choose Object, Compound Path, Make, and that just makes them into a single compound path. And we could make that a little bit thicker should we want to do so. Now there are also some techniques you can use for creating these lines to be a little bit more sort of uneven. And one of them is to select over them and choose Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Roughen. Now for Roughen, you'll want to decrease this to a really small amount. And you can use fractions of a percent. So I'm just using 0.1 of a percent here. And I'm going to decrease the number of sort of bumps there are per inch. You can drop that right down. And you'll want probably a smooth setting as well. So you can apply this effect, just set it to whatever looks good to you, and click OK. And there's one other tool you can use, which is the Wrinkle tool, which says a toolbar position over here with the Width tool. I'm going to select the Wrinkle tool, double click on it. Now I've already set these dimensions. So I have 200 pixels width and height. So it's a circular brush, a round circular brush. I've decreased the intensity. I think the default is 50%. I've set it down to 5%. And I'm just going to click OK. Now you want to be really careful with this and just click a little bit. You don't want a lot of wrinkle, but you do perhaps want a little bit of wrinkle to just uneven things a little bit. So having done that, let's just go and select it and say you can see that the effect is that we've got quite a heavy wrinkle here if that's too much. Just undo it and alter the wrinkle settings to, for example, bring the intensity way down so that you're only getting a little bit of a bump and not a bigger bump that is not suiting your needs. So I hope this helps you see your possibilities for using Illustrator's own tools for achieving a more hand-drawn look to your images and these nice sort of bumpy joins rather than having something look very even and not so organic. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.